Welcome back to Inside City Hall, where we are turning our attention back to those escalating tensions with Iran. Just minutes ago, Iran claimed credit for a missile attack on at least two bases in Iraq um, hosting American troops. Now, the White House has confirmed this, and they say that President Trump has been briefed on the attack. We're still getting details in regarding any casualties or damage. The Department of Defense says at least a dozen missiles were launched at U.S. bases. Joining me now to talk more about this is Paul Rykoff. He's an Iraq War veteran and the founder of the advocacy organization Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. He's also the host of the Angry Americans podcast. Um, welcome. Very good to see you. And you as, you, as you mentioned, you know, you never come in on, on, on uh, the good nights. It's only when there's uh, troubles. But uh, look, what's your first reaction as a veteran of the forever war? It's deeply concerning. I mean, this could be the beginning of some very, very tough days ahead, especially for our military forces stationed overseas. We've got, you know, over 10,000 folks who are in Iraq right now, uh, tens of thousands in the region, and they're in an extremely vulnerable position right now. So our thoughts and prayers are with them right now. And I encourage everyone to just be calm, be thoughtful, try to research, you know, read before you tweet, and just show some measure and some restraint and some clear-headedness. Even if the president doesn't, right. everybody in their own sphere of influence, whether you're a reporter on, on New York One or you're somebody with 100 Twitter followers, you can be deliberate, you can be thoughtful, and we can try to be unified as Americans. I think you know, that's going to be really important right now, especially for our troops that are right now getting rockets landed on them. I, I have talked over the years with a number of veterans, with um, active duty military, with um, strategists and so forth, and they always talk in the way that you're describing, you know, that there's always a, a cost and a benefit, and you have to sort of weigh these things. Um, the president made his decision that he was going to make this strike and, and take out this leader, uh, this, this high-ranking uh, general. Um, is it right to second guess him or Absolutely. do we have to just assume? I think it's responsible, it's patriotic and it's deeply American to second guess him. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no greater uh, act that the president can make than to send America's sons and daughters potentially to die. So as, as patriotic Americans, we should ask hard questions. We should demand the truth. This is the most significant offensive action the American military has taken since the invasion of Iraq. Taking out Soleimani is a very big deal. It's going to cascade throughout the region and it may open a Pandora's box that, that most directly our troops are going to have to to face. So I think we're really going to have to strap in for some tough days ahead, especially for our military and for our politics. Like this is a time for Republicans and Democrats, hopefully, to finally mm -hmm. be able to put stuff aside and focus on our national security to include our security here at home. I, I understand the symbolic um, uh, importance of, of somebody like General Soleimani. Um, I wonder if operationally, could it really be one person who was, I mean, he's uh, apparently a, a diligent and skilled uh, commander, battlefield commander and terrorist. Um, but is that one person responsible for uh, as much as we've seen? Does it all fall apart without him? Or is this a machine that he built that is now going to be trained on it, U.S. forces? It's a, it's a combination of both. I mean, he, he has kind of a mythical, uh, legendary status among the Iranian people. He's a hero of the Iran-Iraq War, which was a brutal war that killed almost a million people. Uh, and he's viewed kind of as a combination between uh, General Petraeus, maybe like a George Washington, the head of the CIA, mm -hmm. and the vice president all wrapped into one. And he's been incredibly influ influential throughout the region all the way over to Lebanon. So he's got a lot of allies. So taking him out is going to be personal for many people throughout the region. But this is also not an incredibly controllable situation. Anybody who hates us right now can take a shot at us. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is try to achieve the moral high ground. And the president's got to do that. He's got to control the narrative, say why we're right, say why we're the good guys. Because if the Iranians can paint us as the bad guys, that's a very, very dangerous situation, not just now, but long term for American interests around the globe. You know, you mentioned moral high ground. There's talk about um, targeting antiquities, possibly being a war crime. There's been this related controversy that I know you've weighed in on in recent weeks yeah. about Eddie Gallagher and whether or not he should have been pardoned. This is somebody who was uh, credibly accused of, of war crimes as well. Um, does, that, does that really sort of, uh, well, what's your, in your view, what constitutes a war crime? Is it a daily reality for, for troops in the field? Well, a couple questions there, yeah. right? So a, a war crime is a violation of international you know, combat law. So Eddie Gallagher did commit a war crime in that he took a photo with, it, with a dead uh, casualty. Okay, that is technically a war crime. He was convicted of that offense, so he's technically a war criminal. Right. The bigger issue is do we let war criminals walk? And that's why what Trump has done here is so bad. He said that our troops are not bound by the rules. If you do commit a crime, a war crime, you can walk if you are a political favorite of his. On the larger scale, if we, if we say we're going to bomb antiquities, if we don't buy, abide by the 
rules of law. We lose the world, not just people in Iran, but people don't want to stand with Americans if we don't follow the rules. So this is an essential part of not just the last couple of weeks, but years and years ahead. If we want to be viewed as the good guys, we have to abide by the rule. We have to do better than the terrorists, not go down to their level. And that's why a situation over the last couple of weeks can unfold right now. Right now, Iraqis are deciding, should we stand with the Iranians or should we stand with the Americans? We hope they'll stand with us. But just yesterday, they got a letter saying we're pulling out. And then the Pentagon says, oh, that was a mistake. We didn't mean to send that letter. So it's kind of a mess. And the mess now has American sons and daughters' lives in the balance. So the stakes couldn't possibly be higher. Is, is it important for p people on the front line to feel that they are, that we are the good guys? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's important for the whole world to think of Americans as good guys. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that liberated Europe, you know, and, and saved the world from fascism. We need to be those people. And we've had a hard couple of years. And with Trump out in front, our image, our national brand is, is taking a huge hit. And when people view Trump poorly, they view a young specialist in the Bronx in the same way. And about 5% of the overall American military comes from New York. So mm -hmm. every time you see casualty figures, every time you see a unit from the 82nd Airborne or the 173rd deploying, it's probably about 5 to 10% New Yorkers. Wow. Uh, and we've got National Guard units, reservists, that are right now probably being, being put on higher alert on our bridges and tunnels, Grand Central, and all across the region. So it's over there, but it's also back home here. And, and as a matter of uh, keeping faith, right? I mean, on the front end, when they're recruiting, they're telling you, you're joining, you know, I mean, instead of a volunteer uh, military, you're being told you're going to join uh, an organization uh, for a cause and uh, to uphold values that have real meaning. And I guess it undermines that when the president says, hey, maybe we'll bomb... You know, maybe we'll bomb ancient ruins yeah. if we feel like it. If, if America was a religion, our, our veterans and troops are supposed to be like the clergy. We're supposed to be the defenders of the cloth. We're supposed to be the upholders of the values, kind of like the samurai. And especially now at a time when so few Americans serve, less than one half of 1% of the population serves in the military, they need to be uh, respected and understood, but they also need clear leadership that upholds the same values that they do. Our troops from the Bronx and Brooklyn can't have one set of rules and the president have another. We all have to be on the same page. So even if Trump fails to lead in the next couple of weeks, I hope that our troops can step up and that everybody can do what they can to push forward a positive, image for America and try to reclaim the narrative. This is this is a long haul, Errol. We're really in for some tough days ahead. In, in our last minute, there's no getting around it. We're in the middle of a presidential campaign. Um, are you and other veterans going to vote uh, for candidates based on how they react in this situation? Absolutely. I mean, stakes couldn't possibly be higher. We're talking about America's sons and daughters. We're talking about nukes. We're talking about global conflict. This is why we need a, a steady and thoughtful commander-in-chief who understands American values and can protect us here at home. It's important to note that there are only two veterans left in the race, Tulsi Gabbard, who hasn't made the latest debate stage, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who served in Afghanistan. So their perspective in particular could be valuable in the days ahead, but you don't have to be a veteran to support veterans in our military. And we hope that all of them get it right from all parties. Okay. Thanks so much for coming by. I'm going to join you for your podcast next week, next yes, Tuesday, right? L look forward to it. Yep. See Thank you then. You. Thanks very much. Let's uh, take a short break now. Coming up next as Michael Bloomberg continues to spend big, I'll be joined by his campaign's new national political chairman, former mayor of Philadelphia, Michael Nutter. Stay with us.